In this video, we're going to go over the circle word problems from the back side of the practice packet, prepping us for the standard test. Okay, so number seven on the back side says a car tire has a radius of nine inches. So I'm just going to underline that there because that's going to be helpful information. Uh, our question is how far does the car travel after 20 tire rotations? So that means that the car tire is going to rotate 20 times, and I want to know how far we've traveled. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw out my tire here. It has a radius of 9. Radius is the distance from the center to the edge. Um, so I know that this distance is 9. Underneath I'm just going to write radius is equal to 9. I also know then that a diameter is all the way through. So that means that the diameter is going to equal 18. So I just got some notes for myself there. Okay, as I think about this tire rotating, the part that's of the tire that's actually touching the ground as it rotates is the rubber. And so that's only on the outside, so that's circumference. So I'm going to need to solve for circumference. Okay, now I have the radius and the diameter here. I prefer to use the equation circumference equals pi times diameter just because uh, it only requires me to multiply by pi. So now I'm trying to solve for circumference. I'm going to plug in the diameter of 18 here. So I have circumference equal to pi times 18. And now I'm going to plug that in on my calculator. So I have circumference equals pi times 18, and I get 56.52. So right now I know that the circumference equals 56.52, and our label is inches. But I need to know how far it goes after 20 tire rotations, and this is just one. This is a circumference, so it's one time around. I need it to go around 20 times. So the next thing I'm going to do is take 56.52 and multiply by 20. And when I do that, I get 1,130.4 inches. And I could change that to feet if I needed to, but it doesn't say that I have to, so I'm just going to leave it as inches. All right, and number eight here it says Caleb eats one fourth of a pie. The pie is a diameter of 10 inches. How many square inches of pie does Caleb eat? Um, so I, I noticed right away I have a couple pieces of information here. So he eats one fourth of a pie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out my circle for my pie. And I'm going to cut it into fourths. And I know that he's only going to eat one fourth. So the shaded part is the part that he eats. I also noticed that the pie has a diameter of 10 inches. So all the way across here is 10 inches. And that means that the radius or halfway is only 5 inches. I also noticed here that it says how many square inches of pi does he eat? And the only thing that we measure in square inches is area. So this tells me I need to solve for area. Well our area formula is area equals pi times radius squared or radius squared times pi either way. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this radius of 5 and I'm going to plug it in here for r. So pi equals 5 squared. 5 squared that's 25 and so now I'm going to use my calculator to take pi times 25, and that is 78.5. So my area of the entire thing right now is 78.5. The thing is, I only want to know one fourth. And so since this pi has been split into four parts and I want to know one of them, I'm going to take 78.5 and I'm going to divide by 4 because that's going to give me one fourth. So that means that my answer is 19.625 square inches. Circle my answer. All right, number nine. A large flower pot has a radius of seven inches. How many seeds can be planted if one requires 10 squared inches of soil? All right, to start off here, I see <clears throat> radius of seven inches. So radius is equal to seven takes two radius to make a diameter, so the diameter is twice as long. It's 14. I'm going to draw it out. Right here, I've got 7 there. And I see here that it says, how many seeds can be planted? So this is the question I'm, I'm answering. How many seeds can be planted if each one requires 10 squared inches? Again, squared inches tells me that I need to find the area. So first thing I'm going to do is find the area. If area equals pi times r squared, and I know that r is 7, that means area is equal to pi times 7 squared. 7 squared is 49. 
and I'll plug that in my calculator. We got pi times 49 is equal to 153.86. Okay, this is my area, but my question was how many seeds can be planted if each one requires 10 squared inches? That means if I plant one seed, I need 10 squared inches. If I plant two seeds, I need 20 squared inches. If I plant three seeds, I need 30 squared inches. So I could continue doing this until I got down to 153, or I'm also asking the question, how many times does 10 go into the area? Or how many times does 10 go into 153.86? So essentially what I can do is I can take 153.86 and divide it by 10, because that's going to answer that question of how many times will it go in there. And when I do that, I end up with 15.386, okay? So we're close. The only thing is here, it doesn't make sense to have 0.386 of a seed. If I round up to 16 at this point, those seeds are going to be too close together and they're not going to grow. So in this case, I need to round down to 15. And I would have 15 seeds that could be planted in that large flower pot. Right, our very last one here. Naomi is tying ribbons around four inch diameter candles for decoration. She has three shelves that each hold five candles. What is the minimum amount of ribbon she needs uh, so that she so that each candle has a ribbon tied around it? All right, so a couple different things I noticed here. Uh, she's tying the ribbons around four inch diameter candles. So that means that the diameter is equal to four. That means that the radius is equal to two because the radius is half the diameter. I also notice she has three shelves that each hold five candles. So I'm just going to draw that out. Here are my three shelves, and each one can hold five candles. Okay, so we get this idea here. This means there are a total of 15 candles. Or we could have just taken five times three, but I want to see that visual there. Okay. Our question though is what is the minimum amount of ribbon she needs so each candle can have a ribbon tied around it. That means all 15 have to have a ribbon around them. And if we're thinking about the outside of a candle, tying it around this candle, you can't go through the middle. You're not going to fill the entire thing. We need to know the circumference. So circumference is equal to pi times diameter. My diameter from over here is 4. So circumference is equal to pi times 4 and that's going to give us that circumference is 12.56 okay, this would be for one candle though and I have 15 candles so if I need this much ribbon for one candle if I need to find that much ribbon and I have 15 candles I'm going to multiply by 15 and I end up with an answer of 188.4 inches of ribbon. I need 188.4 inches of ribbon.